Hey guys, it's Andrew. In this video, we're going to build another ES7 decorator. This time, we're going to build a memoize decorator. If you're not familiar with function memoization, basically all that means is this. When you call a function with a given set of arguments, it returns a value. If this is a pure function, then that function will always return the same value when it receives the same set of arguments. So if the function receives the same set of arguments regularly, instead of having it process that input the same way every time and return the same value every time, what memoization is, is save the value after you do the processing and and then next time you see the same arguments, you can just return the same value instead of having to process that input again. If that sounded confusing, don't worry, because there is an excellent example of memoization that is both super practical and super easy to understand, and that is calculating a Fibonacci sequence. Let's write a function to do that, first of all. And the fib function will take a number n, and we will calculate the nth Fibonacci number. So the way this works is if n is less than or equal to 0, we're just going to return 0. If n is equal to 1, we'll return 1. Otherwise, we'll return this.fib n minus 1 plus this.fib n minus 2. All right, so if you're not familiar, the Fibonacci sequence is basically you can start with 1 and 1, or this also works, of course, if you start with 0 and 1. And what you do is just sum up the previous two numbers in the sequence. And so we're going to calculate the nth Fibonacci number, where, for example, the fourth Fibonacci number is 2. Okay, so this will work. If we pop open the console here, we can see this in action. Uh, let's do console.log functions fib, and let's find 20. You can see the result is 6,765. So first of all, the question is, will memoization actually speed up the Fibonacci function? And the neat thing is, it's really easy for us to figure that out, right? Because not too long ago, we wrote our time decorator, which makes it really easy for us to see how long it takes for a function to run. So if we write at time right here above fib, and we're going to get a lot of fib timings here because almost every call to fib is going to call itself twice. But of course, the only one that matters is fib zero. So let's go ahead and run this. And as you can see, we have a ton of output here in the console. But if we wait for the very last call to fib, you can see the very last one that finishes is fib zero. And as you can see in exponential notation here, it took about 14,000 milliseconds. So about 14 seconds to calculate Fibonacci sequence number 20 when we are not using memoization. So let's see if we can improve on that. I'm going to copy that and let's just paste that there. Okay, let's see if we can improve on that with memoization. Let's write our memoization decorator here. This is going to be called memoize, and of course it's going to take the target, the key, and the descriptor. We'll start by getting the original function as we have before. So we'll get the original function, and this is of course descriptor.value, and then we'll bind it to the target. We're also going to need somewhere to store the previous results. So we'll create an object here where we'll call it previs, and then let's overwrite our descriptor here. So we'll have descriptor.value is going to be a new function. And once again, we'll use the trick of using the rest operator to catch up all the arguments there. And then when we call original function, we will use the spread operator to pass those back. But we only want to call original function if we have never called it with these arguments before. So the way we can see this is we can do args.toString, which will just be our way of serializing the set of arguments. And we can use this as a key in the previs object. Right? So we'll use this as a key to determine whether we've called the function with these arguments before. So we can say if previs has a value with this key, well then all we need to do is return that, right? Otherwise, what we want to do is two things. We want to set this value, right? So we can do it like that. We can set the value of that string in the previous object by calling the function. And then we can actually return this call. And so we can just go ahead and set and return that all at once. All right, so if you're unclear on what's going on here, let's review this one more time. We're replacing our original function, in this case fib, with a new function. First, it will check to see if we have already seen this array of arguments, and if we have, it will return whatever value we stored last time we saw that array of arguments. But if we haven't, we will call the original function with those arguments, we'll store the result of that call in our previous object, and then we'll return that value. Okay, so now we just have to apply this descriptor here. So we will apply memoize. And notice that we are applying memoize first to fib and then time after. So this way, we're going to be timing the memoized version of fib. If we put memoize and then time, we would be timing individual fib calls, but most of those won't be happening because of memoization. So this way, we're timing the fib version wrapped in memoize. All right, so here we go. 
everything looks good. Let's go ahead and run this. And we have a typo descriptor. Let's fix that. And let's run this again. All right. So two things to notice. First of all, it went way faster. Fib0 only took 27 milliseconds instead of our previous 14,000 milliseconds. So that's an incredible speed boost. Also, notice that we actually called Fib a lot less times. When we called it without the memoization, there were thousands and thousands of calls to the fib function. As you can see this time, we only made 38 calls to fib because as we stored values, we didn't have to rerun fib. Excellent. So this not only shows the benefits of memoization, but it also shows how easy it can be to both add memoization to an existing function, but also how it can be easy to add multiple decorators to a function. Of course, you'll want to make sure you get the order right because it's possible that by mixing up the order, you're going to get different results. So just be cautious about that. But otherwise, this is an excellent use of decorators. If we try and count a much higher number, for example, Fibonacci 100, and you try and run this, hopefully this isn't going to crash my browser. We're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting. Okay, maybe I am gonna have to edit part of this out. And it turns out that did entirely freeze up my browser. But if we try and do something smaller than 100, like maybe 20,